In this latest Naviate Rebar Discovery session, we will take a look at colour rebar and also explain how colour rebar can help with your reinforcement detailing. Over the last few discovery sessions, we've reviewed our features that enable the automatic generation of reinforcement. Whilst these features are obviously essential, we also need to check our rebar detailing to help maintain quality and standards. Colour Rebar has been designed to help facilitate model checking as well as a great tool to efficiently select and filter rebars. Let's now take a look at some typical use cases. We'll begin by selecting the 3D working view and we'll start by checking all of the rebars to make sure they're not over stock length. Without Colour Rebar it's really difficult to actually see what rebars are actually doing within the project. They're all the same colour and obviously they're quite a dense arrangement. So what we can do here is select Colour Rebar off of our Naviate Rebar tab. The Colour Rebar dialog is now open. You'll notice that the instance properties are being read from all of the reinforcement bars and the first property in the list is A. You can then see that the data grid has been populated with automatically generated colours representing the leg length of every single rebar within the project. We'll now change the rebar parameter. So what we want to check for here is the length of each bar. So we'll go ahead and select length of each bar and we can now see the data grid has changed again. Now scrolling down towards the bottom of the data grid we can clearly see here that we have two entries that are over our stock length of 10 metres. We can then select those elements and now ask the colour rebar dialog to show these elements in the properties palette. I can very clearly see that these are straight bars at the moment and looking down through here we can obviously confirm that these are over stock length. Of course all of our Naviate rebar tools are modeless. We can still manipulate the view, we can rotate and zoom in and out and also we can go back to the rebar tab and of course here we could use divide rebar to make sure that these bars are maintaining stock length. So we'll just go ahead here and use our divide rebar tool. We'll then refresh the colour rebar dialog and again scrolling down the data grid here I can now clearly see that we've now got the bars all at stock length here. Now I just want to check that the shape codes are set correctly for these 10 metre bars. So we'll go ahead and make that selection of the 10 metre bars and again here it's quite difficult to actually see those. So what we can do is use the Naviate panel here to help us visualise these by isolating those rebars. We can now really clearly see all of those rebars that are actually 10 metres long. Of course we can then select all of those rebars in here and in the properties palette we can make sure that the shape code is set to 01. Once we've done this we'll undo the isolate rebar and we'll now use colour rebar to actually check the shape codes. So again here in the instance properties we can go ahead and select shape code and of course the data grid is populated automatically and we can now see all of the 01 shapes have this light green colour. Now you can see that the colour is quite close to shape code 11 so what we can do is click on the data grid here and we can select a different colour in the colour dialog. So now I'm colouring up all of the shape code 1s to our red colour here and looking in we can very clearly see where all those shape code 1s are situated within the reinforcement model. Of course we can go through and actually change any of these colours in the data grid. The chances are that once you've actually set some of these colours you might want to actually save these. So at the top here we can actually save these name settings and we can give these a name. So in here I'm going to call these ones shape code. And now in the colour rebar dialog I can actually select these name settings. So another one I've saved here is the bar diameter. So looking at this we can now visualise all of the rebar diameters based on the colours that we've pre-selected and saved. Another really good check is to make sure that all the rebars are in their correct hosts. So again here I'm going to select the instance properties and we'll go ahead and select host. Looking at the host marks in here we can now check that the rebars are fixed or attributed to the correct hosts themselves. So again looking into the foundations here which is particularly important I can actually see that we've got these sign bars here which are the column rebars but then I've got this lighter blue colour here which are the foundations. Again I can actually put a better contrast onto that so perhaps here I'll use the orange colour. We can check that all the rebars in the foundations are actually fixed and hosted into the correct concrete formwork. 
And of course, as we've already seen, if we want to actually use this to make a selection and actually isolate the bars, we can do that quite easily. So here, I'm going to select all of the beams in the model here. We'll ask Color Rebar to show the elements in the properties. Once again, we can go to the Rebar tab, and here we can actually then isolate those rebars. So we'll go to Isolate Rebar in here, and again here we can clearly see all of those uh, beam reinforcements have been isolated within the model. Lastly, we'll use Color Rebar to help us understand drawings more effectively. So I'm going to just open up a sectional view in here. We can see in this particular model here, we have quite a few different rebars overlapping in here. Now it's quite difficult to actually see, for example, here where this U-bar ends and the straight bar starts. So in the Color Rebar dialog, again we'll refresh the data grid here, and what I'd like to now do is understand the shape codes associated to each of these bars here. So we can go down and actually choose Rebar Shape Codes. Notice that it's not showing me this because currently all of the reinforcement here is using a coarse level of detail. So effectively it's not actually a 3D model but a line. However, if we look at the Color Rebar dialog, what we can do here is override the projection and cut lines. And now it's really easy to obviously see where the L bars are, where the U bars are, where the straight bars are, and then again here where this link is situated. So again, another really good use case to actually understand our reinforcement drawings more effectively. So I hope this discovery session has been useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.